This is the Sony ZV-10 and today I'm going to show you how to use this camera as a webcam. Now the Sony ZV-10 is hands down one of the best content creation cameras that you can get especially especially if you are a beginner content creator or you're looking to upgrade from just your phone to create content and there are a variety of reasons for that especially for those of you who are streamers or do a lot of streaming as part of your content creation this camera is incredibly easy to set up and use for streaming and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. Now I've done a video on this before however that method is a little bit more complicated and it's mainly for those of you who want the maximum quality coming out of this camera for their streams and that uses the capture card method but this is for those of you who aren't really bothered about that if you're going to be using it as part of your gameplay streaming or anything like that or even as just as a webcam then this method is absolutely perfect and by no means is the quality that comes out of it significantly worse but I'll show you all of that in a second so first thing that you're going to need really for this is one of these it's basically any usb c cable ideally it should be a data transfer cable because those are the ones that are the highest quality for data transfer and basically means you're going to get minimal to no lag when you have that connection going so a higher quality usb c cable is better but generally most usb c cables should do the job so i've got my macbook here today to show you everything that you need to do to connect your sony zv e10 up to your laptop to use as a streaming device and obviously it's transferable to windows laptops as well it's pretty much exactly the same I'm just using a Mac because that's what I use so hopefully all of the settings will come up on the screen as I'm going through the camera so I'm just going to have the camera set down here so it's easier kind of for me to use and it's not flinging around in front of the screen but I'm going to show you each of the steps that you need to go through to get this camera set up for USB-C streaming and it's actually very very easy it's a couple of steps and you're good to go so obviously start off with let's switch on our camera here from that the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're in the right mode so by hitting the little mode button at the top you can switch between photo video and smq mode um, what we want to be in is we want to be in video mode so the one that has the little video symbol up in the left top hand corner now from there you want to hit the menu button and you want to navigate to where it says here movie one so you've got quality and image size for you've got the photo settings and then you've got the movie settings there which is the purple menu and then you want to go to your shoot mode ideally you want this to be in manual exposure so you can actually set all of your settings the way you want it to so your shutter speed iso your exposure settings etc make that the way you want it to you can pop it into auto mode and it will just work but i prefer doing it this way so i'm going to show you this way because it's just a little bit more control that you have over the quality of your image so Hitting that, you're in manual video mode now. And then what you want to do is you want to go down and hit your file format. So in this case, this doesn't actually really matter because with the USB-C streaming, it does limit you to a 720p footage, which again is not by no means bad because you are using a mirrorless camera. So the quality coming out of that is still going to be good. But what we do want to do is set our record settings. Now, this is basically the frame rate that you want to record at. I'm going to use 30p here as an example because that's kind of what you use for web streaming or for social media on the web or internet stuff that's really it now take note of this you've got the usb streaming option here we're not going to hit that just yet i'm going to show you a couple more things that you want to do in the main settings menu so now that we're in the actual main camera screen what you want to do is using the controls that you have set on your camera i have the little dial here set for shutter speed and the dial wheel at the front set for aperture and then obviously you hit the side button for iso so regardless of that you want to set your aperture iso and your shutter speed to fit the settings that you've got in terms of exposure. So regardless of that, the first thing you wanna do is set your shutter speed so that it matches your frame rate. And in this case, you always wanna double your frame rate to get the value for your shutter speed. So that follows 180 degree rule. What that basically means, if I'm in 30 FPS, then my shutter speed should be set to about one over 60. We then wanna take and set our aperture and our ISO to fit the exposure of our room. Now, it's best if you do this whilst the camera is kind of set up and facing you and that way you can obviously dial in the look and the actual exposure that you want for me this is going to be f 2.8 on my camera and iso is going to be 640 now this is again going to vary depending on the kind of lens you have and the kind of environment and the lighting that you've got set up so don't follow exactly this values make sure you set it up on the camera yourself now enough waffling about that what we're going to get to next is actually streaming to do that make sure you've got your usb-c cable ready and what you want to do really is you want to hit that menu button and then hit usb stream and there you go it will come up with a message saying usb streaming not connected um connect to usb cable so you want to take your usb cable and just plug it in and once you've plugged it in start streaming from connected device so whatever device you've got it connected to should now recognize the zve 10 or the zve 10 whatever you want to call it as a webcam or a streaming device so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it up here. I've got another tripod here. I'm going to pop this up here and then I'm going to show you what 
the actual footage looks like. So I'm gonna connect it to OBS. I'm gonna show you how to set it up in OBS because that's what most people use for their streaming. But regardless of what you're using, it's the same kind of process. You're just basically adding the ZV-E10 as your webcam device or your video capture device. Now, before I go and do that, actually, there is one thing that I wanna say. What I've actually done is I've replaced this button at the top here, which is um, kind of defocus mode because I don't really use that um, as my streaming button. And you can do that for um, the record button as well or for any of the customizable buttons. So the way to do that is if you hit your menu button, um, and you go a couple of times to the right to your custom menus, um, custom operations one, which is again in the purple menu, um, go down to custom key for video. And then basically um, I can show you here the top right button there, um, my custom button one is set as USB streaming. So you can just kind of set that to anything. So I like using the shutter button as my record button. So I've got the record dedicated record button up here set to AF1, but you can also set that to USB streaming if that's what you want to do if that's what you're using the camera for mainly and um, then just hitting that will turn on the usb streaming or for me i've got it set to custom one and hitting that is going to turn this into usb streaming so just to demonstrate if i go back into the menu and then i just hit this button here it basically triggers the usb streaming without me having to go into the menu so if you're going to be streaming a lot and you've got it mounted up somewhere and you just want to keep it there then this is an easy solution to just get you into the streaming mode really really easily so i'm going to set the camera up on the tripod here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to add it in obs and then what the quality looks like now that i've got this set up as my tripod you can see what the menu basically looks like when you've got the device connected and stuff so this is what it will look like on your screen however it will obviously be a nice clean feed and i'm going to show you exactly how to do that in obs so if you move over to obs here um, what you want to do is you want to come down to your sources section here at the bottom and click the little plus button and select video capture device or video capture source. Um, I'm gonna just name this USB-C uh, ZV-E10. And there we go. And then you've got your options here to select your device. Obviously, what we wanna do is we wanna select the ZV-E10. And there you go. So use preset. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the maximum you're gonna really get up to is gonna be um, 720p but if you hit the use uncheck the use preset you're gonna be able to set your resolution to the maximum available which is 720p and then you're gonna hit 30 so obviously it's 720p at 30 fps so it's actually a good idea if you're gonna set the same in camera to 30 fps like i've done and then we're gonna go and hit okay we're gonna just maximize this over my other feed which i've got there to show you what the actual menu looks like and this is what it's gonna look like in live streaming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now shift over to talking to the actual camera and you're gonna see what the quality of that looks like. So, so shifting over in three, two, one, and here we are. So we are now looking directly at the ZV-10 recorded through OBS. And this is basically what your stream is gonna look like. And you can see, if I can see on the screen here, um, it actually looks really, really good. The quality that's coming out of it looks pretty much indistinguishable from what it would look like through the capture card, even at 720p. Now, some people have reported that there is a little bit of a lag and that probably just depends on both your computer's processor as well as the kind of quality of the USB-C cable that you're using. So I would just make sure that your computer is powerful enough to run streaming devices or multiple streaming devices and do multiple things like that at the same time. Dem2 Max are pretty good at this, um, but if you're using a PC, then make sure especially if you're going to be using it for streaming, it's not an old Dell laptop or something like that. So that definitely matters. And the quality of your USB-C cable does actually make a slight difference. Um, if you do have a higher quality data transfer cable, your data transfers, obviously, speeds are going to be better, which basically means that the video feed that's being run through that USB-C connection is going to be of a slightly higher and smoother quality. So as you can see here, the frame rate and everything is pretty good. And it's probably the best looking webcam quality that I've seen coming straight out of a camera even in comparison to some of the best quality webcams out there i think that the quality coming out of this is just absolutely insane so we're going to finish off the video by kind of shutting this feed down shifting over to the main feed so there you have it that's how you use a sony zv10 as a webcam through just a USB-C connection and it is fairly simple. Especially once you've got everything set up, like the custom button as well, it basically makes it super easy because all I now have to do is set this up somewhere, hit the custom button and then connect the USB-C in and it's done, that's it. You don't need to really worry about anything else and you can just get streaming or using it as a webcam straight away. I have switched to using this for all of my meetings and everything because it's just so nice and easy to set up and I was not liking the quality that's coming out of my old Logitech C920. So I hope that was useful to you guys. 
Make sure you leave a comment if you have any sort of questions about this. I'd be more than happy to help and give a little bit of extra guidance in the comments down below. If you guys want more help and priority replies to your comments, then I do have the membership tab open. It does really help me out as a creator if you guys become a member for my channel. And it also gives you things like the options for priority messaging or contacting me on other social media platforms as well as other perks like pre-released videos and BTS of some of the projects that I'm working on. And I've got quite a few projects that I'm working on in the background. So there's a lot coming for this channel and a lot of changes are on the way. So that's it for today, guys. Until next time, this is Kyle24 signing out.